Hello and welcome to Lenvato Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Pordila and today you'll learn how to create angled edges with SVG and SAS. And when I say angled edges, I mean this and this and this. Of course, these are uh, super easy to create in a vector editing application. All you have to do is export that as an image load it afterwards and you're done. But uh, this approach has its limitations as we're dealing with images. So if you want the absolute best control over how uh, an angled edge like this scales and is customizable, then the way to go is SVG. So I'm going to show you three methods of creating something like this. And we're going to start with the first method which uses an inline SVG. Let's begin. We start in the HTML where I'm going to create a div with a class of hero and an SVG to which I'm going to set a view box of 00, 100, 100. And I'm also going to specify preserve aspect ratio to none. All right, we'll come back to this in a second. For now, let's uh, write some CSS. I'm going to Set a background color to the body. You'll see why in just a little bit. A very light gray. And then I'm going to style the hero. Basically what I want to do is set a position relative. Again, you'll see why in just a little bit. I'm going to set a min height of 500 pixels and a background image. Let's do a gradient. Linear gradient. We start at 4.5. 6, 8, DC, and we go to B0, 6, A, B3. Let's see it. Wonderful. Let's actually lower this minimum height because I want you to see uh, exactly what's going on here. Let's actually set its uh, height here to about 300 pixels. All right. So how do we add an angled edge that goes from here and it goes something like this. Well, it's all about this SVG that we created. Inside, we're going to create a polygon and we're going to specify its points like this. The first point starts at 0, 100. The second starts at 100 and 0. And the last one, 100, 100. Okay, so currently it looks something like this. It's a triangle, basically. Now, what I'm going to do now is go down here, go to SVG. I'm going to set its position to absolute. And I'm going to place it at the bottom. And I'm going to give it a width of 100%, although it might not be necessary, and a height of let's say 10 viewport width. And also I'm going to fill it with the same color that I used on the body background color. And look at that. We now have an angled edge. Now, how did we achieve this? Well, we basically masked a part of our element, our hero, with a triangle that goes from here to here to here. So if my body had a white background color, or let's just remove this completely, you see why I uh, chose to use a color in the first place. I wanted you to see the difference between the two and exactly how this works. So the polygon that we created started here 0x 100y, it goes here to 100x and 0y, and then it goes here to 100, 100, which is this bottom corner. So by setting the color of the SVG the exact same color as the body, right? So if I were to put a fill of white here, it gives us the illusion that this hero area is cut off. It has an angled edge. But the problem is that behind it, 
we cannot show anything. So if I were to have something behind this uh, hero area, we would not be able to see it uh, following this line. We would be able to see it from the bottom here. So, you know, this is a very simple approach, but it's not the best. It has its limitations. So now let me show you a method number two, which actually solves this problem. We'll start with a div class hero. And for the markup, that's all we need actually. All the masking and stuff will be done from CSS. So in CSS, we're actually going to copy uh, the code from the previous example. I'm going to leave this uh, commented for now. Yeah, hero position relative height 300 pixels and the same uh, background image. And let's change its behavior so it automatically refreshes. Okay, but now instead of using an SVG, we're going to use a pseudo element to which we're going to set the background image as the SVG that we created previously. So it goes like this, hero after. We're going to start by grabbing our SVG and putting it through an encoder or a URL encoder for SVG. So we're going to insert it right here and it gives us a preview. Everything is fine. We're going to copy the ready for CSS, right? Copy it. We're going to paste it right here. I'm uh, simply going to add a fill right here. So fill. Uh, for now, let's go with red so we can see what we're dealing with. I'm going to set background position, repeat and size. So we're going to set it at center, center, background, repeat, no repeat, background size. Let's set it at 100%. This is a uh, pseudo element after all. So we need to set its content to none. And let's give it a height of 10 viewport width. We're using relative values here. I'll show you why in just a little bit. Set a position to absolute. Let's give it a width of 100%. And let's put this at the bottom minus its actual height minus 10 viewport width. All right. So that's how we added this bit. Now I uh, saved the red color so that you can see the difference. Now to make it blend, all we have to do is match this color with this color right here. So I'm going to change the red to RGB and the RGB value of this one. So now we have a nice angled edge that also solves the problem that we had in the previous example. So here, we basically just had uh, a mask on top. Here, we actually have an addition to our main SVG. So if I were to set the body background to, I don't know, blue, if I can type, right? The, you can actually see what's going on behind the angled edge. So that's a very, very nice approach. Now, I uh, did say that I'm going to show you a pixel alternative, right, to, to these values. Well, to understand why I used viewport width is that I want the angle to be consistent on this edge. See when I resize the way the, uh, the edge changes, right? Well, if I were to put uh, pixel values. So let's say 100 pixels here. Well, the angle would change as I resize. So, you know, it really depends on what you're looking for. If you want the angle to change, then use pixel values. Otherwise, you should stick with some relative values, like for example, viewport width and you would get this. Basically, the angle will remain constant as you resize. All right, so these are the two methods or 
two of the methods you can use to create angled edges like this. Uh, I'm going to show you a third one that actually simplifies things a lot. And that is with the help of a SAS mixin that basically does what I did here in the second method. And you can find the SAS mixin at this address. Link is down in the uh, written version of the tutorial. You basically download this plugin and you include it in the element that you want to apply an angled edge to. And you can actually see a demo of it right here. So let me quickly show you that. Uh, we're going to use SAS here. So all I have to do is define a div with a class of hero. And then inside the CSS, I pasted the SAS mixin, which you can download from the, uh, uh, the GitHub page of the project. Uh, I have the same uh, hero area. Let's uh, change its height here slightly so you can see it better, right? And then all you have to do is say include angled edge, and then you would specify the parameters. In my case, I want it outside and bottom, and then you would set the position of the point where the slant begins, and then also the color. In my case, I'm gonna use the hex color from here, and then the height of the, uh, the actual element. In my case, I'm gonna say 100. Now, a limitation of this uh, mixin is that it does not accept relative values for the height or the width. It only accepts unitless integers like this 100. So the angle will not be constant. If you want uh, to achieve the same result as I did in the previous uh, pen that I showed you, uh, you either need to uh, modify the mixin yourself, which uh, you know, it's not that hard, but there is quite a, a bit of code to uh, to change or you can simply use the uh, after pseudo element approach that I showed you in method number two. Uh, this third method by using the mixin basically does the same thing. It has certain limitations, but it also makes uh, your job easier because all you have to do is uh, include a mixin and then configure it, uh, configure it using your own uh, parameters. And speaking of parameters, you can check out the official uh, GitHub uh, project page to learn all about the parameters and how you can uh, position that angled edge. So there you have it, three methods for achieving angled edges with SVGs. Uh, let us know if you have any other methods of achieving the same effect. We'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below in the comment section. Uh, so with that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I'm Adi Pordila and until next time, take care.